everyone, today's video is going to be something I don't usually do, but I was putting on my makeup today and I just had to. So I had a whole video planned today, I was going to go through my entire eyeshadow palette collection, and I can still do that, I probably will actually, when I get back from vacation, because I'm going to be gone for a week and a half. Today's the last video I'll be posting for, like I said, a week and a half. Um, and I do a lot of palette reviews. I love eyeshadow palettes, it's my favorite kind of makeup, and so I do a lot of reviews. However, I really, really try to have tried most, if not all, of the eyeshadows before I ever do a review. I don't want, to, to me, it's more important to not be the first one out. I'm very aware that if you are the first person out, you're going to get more views. Because the more views you have, because like if there's less and less of these reviews, then you're going to get more views, you know, from YouTube because there's not, it's not as saturated. Now, to me... I would rather get less views but have a review that it's like, okay, I've tried everything and I know how I feel. And I'm not going to come back like a week later and have a totally different opinion. That's just me. That's how I like to do things. But today, I, I just have to do a review on this eyeshadow palette. This is the Lorac California Dreaming palette. I just recently got this when I got the Lorac Beauty and the Beast lipstick collection. I did a full review of that and I'll link it below. And I was planning on doing this with you when I got back because I was like, you know, I want to play with it some more. I haven't really gotten to try it. I did this look today and I hate it. I hate it. Very, very rarely do I hate my makeup. There are sometimes, I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, I kind of usually give a comment. And there are definitely times when I'm like, this didn't really turn out how I wanted. Or this is, a lot of times my things, my eyeshadow ends up darker than I wanted. But I hate my makeup today. I don't have any plans. John's going to come over later. Um, cause like I said, I'm leaving for a week and a half and he's not coming with me. But if I was like actually doing something like going, I don't know, I feel like I might take my makeup off because I just hate it. So I had to talk about it. So I'm going to do swatches of everything. I didn't use all of these colors, but I have made it very clear on my channel, I do not like the Lorac Pros. I have the Pro 1, Pro 2, and the Mega Pro 2. And I don't like those shadows. They blend together and they're just not great. However, more recently, I love the Lorac Pirates of the Caribbean eyeshadow palette. It's one of my favorites. If you can still get it when you're watching this video, I highly recommend it. And I really like the Beauty and the Beast palette. Now, I gave it a kind of a lackluster review. I've reviewed all of these. I'll leave my whole product review playlist down below. Um, because I really liked the quality, but I just wasn't overly inspired by it. Um, this one I bought because I was very vain. And the packaging's kind of weird to me. It's got like cat faces and butterflies, but it does have sea stars. And I, in case you are new here, um, and if you're not, you've heard me say this a billion times, I am a marine biologist. Specifically, I'm a benthic ecologist, and I study sea stars. So, something that has sea stars on it, I just automatically want it. And it's relatively thin, and I usually really like Lorac. Um, and they've just been hitting it out of the park for me lately. It has a really nice mirror. Um, it is white, but it's like kind of a cardboard, and I don't think it's going to get overly messy. Maybe it will. I don't know. That doesn't really bother me. And I thought this was kind of a unique sort, um, assortment of colors. I really liked this green, and you know they had this shade called Starfish, and I really wanted that. They also had this shade Hot Toddy right here, and that was in their um, Beauties Who Brunch palette. If you, I, I did not, I don't own that one, but their, you know, their pastel palette, and I was really intrigued by that shade specifically. So, you know, there are just some things in here I wanted, and so I was like, you know, I, I want to get it, and it was thirty dollars, and thirty dollars is a really great deal for like a higher end palette, especially one with twelve shades. I hate my makeup look that I created with this palette. So let's go. We're going to go shade by shade, and I'll tell you if I've used it or not. Um, so first we have Sandcastle, which is what's in my inner corner. And this one is really, really soft. It's kind of powdery, but not like grossly so. You can probably even see that powder. It's kind of like, it looks a little more yellow in the pan, but in person and in a swatch, it just kind of is like a shimmery white. I'm cool with that. I love a shimmery white. I like a really bright highlight. I think every palette should have a shimmery white, so I'm good with that. I'm going to go across the rose, just so you know. 
Next, we have the shade Button. And this is weird. It's kind of... I don't know. It's like a taupey flesh tone. <coughs> and it's really not matte. It's really kind of a satiny, sheeny formulation. I don't really know how to describe it. Hold on, I want to press this button right there. Um, if it was a matte, it'd be great for like blending out your shadows, but it's not. So you could use it all over the lid, but it's kind of a weird shade to have all over the lid in my opinion. I don't know, don't love it. Overcast. I started using this and I was like, what in the world? So in the pan, it's this beautiful like gray purple. I was all about that. And in a swatch, you can tell it is really powdery. These are very similar, in my opinion, to the Lorac Pro palettes. Now, I realize that the um, Pirates of the Caribbean palette is said to be the Lorac Pro formula, but I don't get any fallout or anything. I got a ton of fallout today. And this shade is the patchiest eyeshadow I have ever worked with. I, I used it, okay, every single day I put a shade on this one. This is the tapered, the Bogashis, I don't know how to say it, tapered blending brush. I just have a big fluffy brush and I put a shade on it and I kind of work it in the crease, this kind of area. Generally, it's been my Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer because I'm panning that right now, but I've used a, lots of other shades um, and I use this brush. It was so patchy so so gross and patchy and so then and then it would like be really dark like I hear it's really dark but then other places it's really light and it kind of was like deepening up like right in my crease and I just kept blending it just kept blending and it just never fixed itself so I was like mm, I don't like that at all that's a bad start but you know we'll, we'll keep playing we'll keep playing we have the shade bonfire which is a pretty matte light pink this would be a decent all over the lid shade. I don't know. I have a few matte light pinks, and I don't really have the most use for them. Um, they're it's too pink to put like as a brow bone highlight for my skin tone, and so I don't really know. I mean, it's a lid shade, obviously, but I don't do a lot of matte looks. So there you go. Then we have the shade Hot Toddy that I was really excited for. It's really pretty. It's really nice. Um, Again, they're just so flaky and powdery. It's a really unique kind of a deepened red and reddish mauve. I have not used this on my eyes and I'm still holding hope. However, it seems like a formulation very similar to Overcast, but we'll try it. Next, we have the shade Starfish. I was so excited for Starfish. I am defending my thesis in October-ish, which is where I do a huge presentation that's open to the public and it is where I get, they decide whether or not my work and what I've done is worthy of getting a degree or not. And I had already planned, I'm gonna wear this eyeshadow. Well, I might not be wearing this eyeshadow. In the pan, and online it kind of looked like a really cool, online it looked like a really cool orange. And I saw swatches, and I was like, oh, it's gonna be like, kind of like, a, like an orangey shade. It's really like a light peach that's not very pigmented at all. It's really shimmery, but not metallic. I don't know. I don't love it. I don't love it. Then we have the shade Seaside. That's the one I was, one of the starfish and Seaside of the two that I was most excited for. Because this was a green, like a pretty forest green. It feels grainy. And in the pan, you see it's got some nice gold flecks. I do have this under my lower lash line today. It's okay. It's not overly pigmented. And on the lash line, I think it almost looks black. It doesn't seem very green. It's one of those shades that's so dark it just kind of looks black. Another disappointment. And then we have the shade Cable Knit. I used Cable Knit. I'm sorry, I know that mirror is probably really annoying. I used Cable Knit today in my crease. And this is a... I can't really decide what this is. It's a brown, like a matte brown, but it's definitely got some purple. I wouldn't say it's a deep purple. It's kind of like an eggplanty brownie. I don't know. It's unique. So patchy. So incredibly patchy. I could not blend this nicely at all. And blending that over Overcast, it was just like a blotchy, disgusting mess. And I was like, cool, guys. Cool. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. Next, we have the shade Cozy. 
and I did use this today, is my Brow Bone Highlight. It is a matte, kind of a peachy tone um, shadow. I like to have a matte shadow to use as my brow bone. Um, it's fine. It's really pigmented and nice. I have no complaints about this shadow. It is really powdery, though. Then we have the shade Boots, and that's what I have kind of in my dark in my outer V. And this one, it, in, it looked navy online. And it is a navy, but it's a very blackened navy. I definitely have other navies or like deep blues that show a lot more blue. The shade Beast Mode in the Lorac Beauty and the Beast palette. Let me, y'all know I have it. It's right here. Like, this shade shows up blue. The navy in the Lorac Pro 2 shadow. This one is not the best formulation, honestly. It's kind of, um patchy but it shows up blue I might get a ton of blue off the off the shadow I got up there I mean it's, it's I guess it looks blue but it's just kind of overly dark um, it is one of the better formulations but again it's not overly pigmented then we have the shade kitty cat kitty cat brings this whole palette home it is a super chunky metallic shade it is a foiled shade and it is gorgeous I really want to use this on my eyes. I have not. Look at that. That is a different formulation than the rest of them. It reminds me of that that gold shade in the Lorac Pro palette, or the the Lorac Unzipped Gold palette. They have some of these, and it reminds me of that. I don't own any of those, but that's what it reminds me of. Um, and it's beautiful. And I don't. I can't really knock the formulation. It's a little flaky, but I think it'll be great on the lids. It's just a weird shade because it's so dark. Like, I feel like if you do this all over your lids, it's going to be overly dark. But you also can't really do it in just the outer corner. You're going to lose that beautiful effect. So, I don't know. It's weird. And then we have the shade 65 Degrees, which is my lid shade. It looks in the pan like this really pretty pinky shade. Look at that. Like it's like, oh, it's gonna be this really pink, pink, like pretty glitter. It's almost like a glitter top coat. Like I put a ton on my, my eyelid today, and it's just not really doing much. Um it just isn't like I put multiple layers of that shade on my eyes today, and it's just not really doing anything. I wanted to love this palette. I love the theme, I love the color names, and you know, I've gotten really frustrated recently on Instagram when I look at swatches and then I get something and the swatches are totally different. One example recently is this Real Her 2 palette. I looked at multiple swatches on Instagram and they all were gorgeous. They were like, oh, it's so pigmented, it's so nice. This is not a nice palette. Like, it's okay, but it's not overly pigmented. And like I said, these shades, not only did it, was it deceiving in the pigmentation, it was very deceiving in the tone. So I don't like that. Whenever I, my, I post swatches on Instagram, and they might not be as beautiful as other people's, but they're real. I don't ever filter my Instagram photos. And it is like, all right, girl, this is the shade that it is. I thought in some weird filter to make it look like it's an orange when it's really this weird peachy shade. I don't like that. I don't know. Like, maybe that doesn't bother other people. And maybe I didn't do quite enough research because I just decided I wanted to hit $50 for free shipping. I wanted this palette. Cool. We'll get it. I like Kitty Cat. I, I'm i hoping that it's going to be very similar to the Lorac Pro palettes, where if I pick out one or two of the shadows from it, then and then work other shadows throughout, it works well. But by itself, it's not great. And it's also, when I got it, I was kind of looking, and it's not overly cohesive. Like, I can see, you know, you could do a really warm tone look with these shadows. Kind of a cool tone look kind of like what i try to do today but it's really not a very cohesive palette it's very hard to get multiple looks out of it so all in all i am going to keep it i'm not saying i'm not going to um because i've never returned makeup i 
It's just not what I do. I know that a lot of people do, and I am all for you returning your makeup. Um, it's just not what I do. And, you know, I definitely think I'll be able to use this. I think there are really small pans. I thought of that, too. And, you know, it's just, it's okay. But are you asking, I mean, if, honestly, I cannot in any way recommend this palette. Unless you are okay paying $30 for that kitty cat shade, or you're okay planning on using this in conjunction with other palettes and only grabbing a shade or two from this palette, then you'll be happy. But as far as my experience goes, it's not good. Just not. I don't like it at all. That's just the truth. I'm sorry to be negative. I don't make negative videos very often, but I'm not gonna lie to you. So that's this eyeshadow palette. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy my honesty, and I hope I see you soon. <laughs> I I hope to see you real soon. Bye.